Hello my bookish besties! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jules. I like to read books, talk about books, and share my thoughts with you. In this vlog I am going to be reading Point Horror books and I'm very excited about it. So for the month of April I am going old school. <laughs> So, um, you may notice in my vlogs this month, I'm going to have some fun earrings on. So, hello. Look at my little cassette tapes. They're so cute. And Peep the Creep Show shirt. <laughs> I love Creep Show. So, uh, old school. Yeah, I'm going to read some point horror books. So, I don't know how many point horror books I'm going to get to this month. So, this may just be one vlog with a few books. I may have to break it up and do a couple vlogs depending on how many I read. So yesterday was day one of Old School April and I decided to start off the read-a-thon, watch-a-thon, activity-a-thon <laughs> with April Fools. So this is my first book I'm reading. I started it yesterday and I'm already about halfway through it. But it is such a fun read. Like I forgot how exciting point horror books are. <laughs> They're so fun. They're so fun. And this one is actually pretty dang creepy. I honestly, I don't remember if I've read this one. There's so many point horror books that I can't remember which one I've read. The only one I 100% remember reading is Trick or Treat. And is, it is my favorite point horror book. But I'm going to read the back of this. On the night of April 1st, Belinda, Frank, and Hildy are driving home from a party when they get involved in a gruesome car accident. The people in the other car never could have survived the wreck, so Frank insists that they take off. After all, what happened really wasn't their fault. Two weeks later, Belinda is the one who still feels guilty about the accident. Then, the pranks begin. Someone sends her a bloody doll's head. A car nearly runs her off the road. Obviously, someone witnessed or survived that car accident, and they're going to make her pay slowly for what happened. April Fool's Day is over, but these jokes are for real. So fun! This totally has, like, so just the premise of this is, uh, I know what you did last summer vibes. So, which obviously this was out before that, so I, I'm, maybe they got some ideas from it. Anyway, so yeah, we, they went to the party, there was an accident. Frank is just kind of a jokester and thinks everything's a joke and doesn't take anything seriously. So even though this accident they had was super serious, um, they were like a couple hours away from where they lived. So they were like, nobody saw it, we're gonna leave. Well, he's the one who suggested that. All these tricks are happening to her and she doesn't know why. She takes a tutor job um, at this creepy people's mansion-y type thing. And it's kind of a coincidence that somebody in their family had an accident recently and she thinks it might be related or maybe not. This may could just be a coincidence, but anyway, yeah, so fun. Uh, I'll update probably when I finish this one and let you know what my final thoughts are on it. I'm back with an update. I finished April Fools and I'm giving this five stars. This was a really fun, really fun time. Creepy things were happening to Belinda and her and her friend Hildy were getting in arguments because Belinda was blaming Frank, which is Hildy's boyfriend, for all these things that were happening and things that were creeping and basically her friend was just still like you're just you're taking it too serious it's not that serious and she's like hello there, there people had an accident people died or people are going to die because they were in this accident and she thinks it's the same accident and so her and Hildy are arguing and she's blaming Frank for all of these um tricks that are happening to her and he swears he isn't doing it so she's still going to this creepy house to try and tutor adam this kid that was in this accident and he is just throwing out all these creepy creepy vibes and um people someone's like watching her and someone tried to run her off the road when she was with adam's brother who's the son of adam's stepmom so they're not really brothers, but like brothers by marriage or whatever. And I did kind of know what was going to happen at the end, but there was also part of it that I didn't know. But anyway, this was just a really fun read. I had a great time with it. So I finished that, but I have my reading tracker. So I, this is my journal that I have for old school April. So these are all my reading prompts. And then I have my tracker here where I can track the books I read and how many points. Um, Cause there's, 
one book can go for like multiple points. So I just look through the list and figure, you know, and see what counts for it. And then I'm tracking it here and then I'll submit those on the forms. So the next book I picked out to read is Camp Fear by Carol Ellis. I have not read this before and I'm doing this because it is, it's actually says, um, in the synopsis, it says Camp Silver Lake and we are team Silver Snakes. <laughs> so I was like, this is perfect. I have to read this. So it says almost everyone at Camp Silver Lake is afraid of something. Bugs, snakes, swimming in the lake. But there's a deeper, darker fear some of the counselors share. The fear that their terrible secret will be discovered. For seven years, they've kept it hidden. Ever since that summer when they were campers together. The summer one camper didn't make it home alive. Now someone is using their secret and their fears to play a frightening game of vengeance. A game that could turn deadly. So I'm excited to read this one. There's 214 pages and I will be back with some updates. Hello, I am back with an update on Camp Fear. Um, I feel like I'm not reading these as fast as, as I should be, <laughs> but these books are really fast to read when I'm actually reading them. So I am currently at the 108 page mark. I was gonna read some of this Monday, either Sunday night or Monday night, I don't remember which night. My, my days are running together over here, but I ended up having to finish an e-arc so that I could do a review on it for NetGalley. I want to try and keep up on those because I don't want to get behind on this. So I was doing that, which was unexpected. So I didn't get to read this. And then yesterday I had the day off and me and my daughter went and had a fun day. And then I had a book club discussion with Kendall on her Patreon. So we were doing that for the clinic that we read. And then while we were doing that, I was just kind of updating my book journal because I've been finding that I get behind. I don't want to get behind, like a month behind. I don't have to go back and like update everything like for the whole month. So I'm trying to do it as I go. Um, so I literally only had like 45 minutes to read last night. Um, if that, <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, back, back to the book. So we have counselors that are at the camp. They are there before the campers are coming. So they're basically getting the camp set up. Um, they're meeting each other, except some of them already know each other because they were campers themselves at the camp like seven years previously when they were younger. And uh, the, so they're just like exploring the camp and basically talking to each other and telling each other like how they know each other, like what their fears are, you know, things like that. Um, and then just kind of hanging out. And one of the girls, her, she's in charge of doing like the display board in like the cafeteria area or whatever. And so she's found all these pictures, these old pictures. And so she found pictures of all these campers from, you know, all the previous years. And then she's been putting several of them up. All of the campers that were there previously seem very weird about like she put all these pictures up and they're just kind of looking at them and they're looking at each other and they just kind of they seem very sketch and she doesn't know what's going on. And so she's trying to find out from some of the, like one of the campers. She's like, why is everybody acting so weird? And he basically tells her something bad happened seven years ago when they were all there as campers. So then the group of girls are together staying in their area and the group of boys are together in their area and the girls think the boys are gonna play a prank on them. So they're like, what if we do it first? That way, you know, like scare them or whatever. And so they like hatch this plan to scare them, but then it doesn't actually end up, they get caught by the boys and are they're, they're not able to do it. And then something happens with the boys that they think you know, they're trying to play a trick on them and it's not a trick. So that's kind of where we're at. The beginning part was really just kind of not really exciting. It just, it has campy, um, feels, you know, like talking about the swimming and the hiking and kayaking and all the fun stuff. Like I, I enjoy reading about that, but it's nothing really like spooky or anything. So yeah, the first parts just was just okay. Um, and now we're finally to a point where some, you know, tricks are happening and they're going to find out. I'm assuming that they are not the ones playing it on each other. I will come back with my final updates and hopefully I can get a good chunk of this read today. So wish me luck. I am back with my final thoughts. So, um, yeah, I just burned through the rest of this today. It was a pretty fast read. So I think I'm going to settle on a three star for this one only because, um, it wasn't, it wasn't very scary. <laughs> 
Uh, it really just like the last half of the book was just a few tricks that were being played on some of the counselors. Um, and really the tricks were just kind of geared toward their fears. So whatever happened to them just kind of enhanced their fear of whatever that thing was. So it just made it a little scarier for them, but not scary in general, I guess I should say. So we come to learn as we go that because of the ways the tricks are being played, it has to be someone who knows them, not just some random stranger. So, uh, yeah, anyway, it was just an okay read. It wasn't, um, it wasn't like thrilling or scary or any of that, but I mean, it's a good, uh, fun camp book. I do feel like the ending was kind of rushed. On the back of the book it says the summer one camper didn't make it home alive. So obviously we know that a camper died at camp. So whoever this is, is obviously somebody who knows the person that died. It's always somebody, those type of revenge horror stories or whatever are usually because it's somebody related or has a connection with, or relationship with that person. So that's kind of who, what we're determining is just like who it might be. Um, but like, what's their end game? They go to the camp. Do they go to the camp to kill all of them? Are they going just to scare the heck out of them? Or are they going to get answers about what really happened? So it's kind of all that you're really wondering like through the book, but then the end, in, the end is just kind of rushed, like, like really quickly rushed. <laughs> so anyway, that is all my updates on that one. The next one I'm going to pick up is Spring Break by Barbara Steiner. And it says, will this be their last spring break? Angie and her four best friends are looking forward to the perfect spring break. That is, until they arrive at the beach and find every motel is filled. Then they meet the owner of the old Jameson place. Why does the owner give them such a great price for the week? And why doesn't he want to live in the house himself? One by one, Angie's friends disappear and Angie learns the old house holds a terrifying family secret. Will this spring break be the time of their lives or the time of their deaths? So this sounds fun. So I'm going to start this now and hopefully get a little bit into it and we'll see. Maybe I can get halfway through this tonight. I'll be back. I am back with an update on spring break. I actually have not picked this up in a couple days because I have picked up some other things I wanted to read. So... I'm finding that I'm kind of running out of steam on these point horror books. Like I like them and I enjoy them, but there are other things I want to get to. So I am going to finish this one and then maybe read one more and then close out this vlog because I have other things I want to get to for old school April and I've run out of time. Like it's literally halfway through the month almost. <laughs> so, um, I am not enjoying this book very much. It is kind of actually rather boring. So we're following a group of friends. They are going on spring break and they are going to a beach area that they did not make reservations for. So when they get there, all the hotels are full. There's nowhere for them to stay. So they think they're going to go just camp somewhere instead of staying in a hotel. They brought stuff to go camping and they stop at a little store, a little grocery store to get supplies. And the lady happens, you know, they're asking her, Hey, do you know anywhere that has anything open where we can stay? And she's like, well, I do have this person I know that's renovating this one place but it's it may not be ready yet or it may not be very nice but he may be willing to rent it out to you so they're like yeah absolutely we don't care we just you know want somewhere to stay inside so she calls him he's like yeah they go to this place so it's called the old jameson place and he bought it it's a really big place has lots of rooms in it and he's renovating it and so they're they he's like yeah you guys can stay here so and it's all furnished like all the furniture is still there the with whoever lived there before left it there and it's not great it's kind of run down but it has electricity and water and everything and so they stay and it's been told that the place is haunted like the first night they're there they hear some music coming like from rooms above them but they can't figure out how to get to them so they're like the place has to have some hidden staircases somehow so they're trying to explore the house to try and figure out where this music's coming from um, and of course they're all like, can ghosts make music? Can ghosts play music? Do ghosts cry? Can they talk? Because they heard like voices, like someone talking. So we've really only had like maybe one or two instances where it's kind of had like a little 
haunting creepiness. And the rest of it is just them out swimming, um, exploring. They went and did some bird watching. There is some rando guy that came up on the beach. Um, like he said, he's camping like further down. And so they're just kind of hanging out with him, which seems a little sketch if you ask me. Like, don't trust the random guy who says he's camping somewhere but, like, doesn't have anything with him. <laughs> so um, they're kind of hanging out with him. And anyway, and they've just gone into town and they got some more supplies, groceries, whatever. And that's really all we're at. I'm halfway through the book and that's pretty much all that's happening. So it's kind of boring me. So right now it's, it's reading at, like, a... A three or maybe less I don't know <laughs> I'm gonna quit rambling now and finish this book and I will come back with my final thoughts final update on this and I didn't I didn't really like this <laughs> um I'm gonna settle on a two for this so it was reading about like at a three the whole time like a low three so after they got back in town a big storm comes in and then like some of the kids go missing and they're out looking for them or trying to figure out what happened to them and there is a part in here that has uh, animal abuse. I won't say the specifics of that, but it drastically dropped the points for this because I don't mind sometimes, not really animal, <laughs> the death of an animal. <laughs> I will say that. It's not really animal abuse. It's just the death of an animal. But I feel like it was unnecessary. Like there was just no reason for it. Like I understand sometimes in scary books or whatever coming across a dead animal or a dead animal being, you know, hung up on someone's front door. This was just like unnecessary. So that like totally just bombed my rating of this. So... Um, you know, yeah, they were going missing and then, you know, it, it's revealed why they were missing and whatnot. And I, I don't know. I like that the ending, the plot ending was, was pretty good. Like where it went with it, I wasn't really, I kind of was thinking something along the lines of how it was going to end. And it, and it was very similar to that. I just didn't really understand like the top floor being like, unaccessible like they had to really search to get to it and it just didn't make any sense to me so yeah final rating for this one and I am not going to keep this book so for point horror books I'm discovering that I I do maybe want to collect them but I want to collect the ones that I like so because I do feel like these are good books that you could just pick up anytime you know, as a quick palette cleanser, you know, because most of them are around 200 pages or less. So those are fast, fun, easy reads. Fun, if they're fun. <laughs> this was not fun. So I'm going to unhaul this one, actually. I'm not going to keep it because if it's not something I'm going to pick up again or say, you know, a couple years from now, like if I collect these a couple years from now, I pick it up and I'm like, oh, if I forgot I read it, like I don't want to reread a book that I thought was not great. So the last one I'm probably going to pick up unless, depending on how quick I get through this, like I said, I have another, I have a bunch of other stuff I want to get read. I'm mood reading and currently these point books are like not keeping me in a great mood. Um, so I'm in the mood to read something else and I don't want to keep this vlog going like forever <clears throat> so I'm probably only going to read one more and then close it out so call waiting is the next one I'm going to pick up by R.L. Stein, and I'm hoping this is a good one I want to end it with a good note because I love R.L. Stein. 
The next call may be her last. Someone wants to talk to Karen badly, very badly. Someone who has something very special to say. Someone is calling Karen to say they care, to tell her the plans they've made just for her. Someone wants to reach out, touch her, kill her. Poor Karen. She's all alone this time. And if Karen can't trace the killer caller, Karen's going to die. I find it hilarious that her name is Karen. <laughs> because, you know, Karen, don't be a Karen. That didn't really come about until like, you know, recently. So uh, it's just funny. Anyway, I'll be back with updates on this. Hello friends, I'm back with an update on Call Waiting by R.L. Stein. But first, look at my earrings, little mystery machine. <laughs> and got my Scooby-Doo shirt on. <laughs> um, old school April. So I am halfway through this book. Um, I could have probably read all of this today, but I was going back and forth between this and Murder Road. So I have like 120 pages left of Murder Road, so I want to finish that. Um, but I also want to finish this, so I don't know. I may try and finish this really quick. I only have like 80 pages left. Anyway, um, so we are following Karen, crazy Karen, because she actually is kind of a crazy Karen. So the book starts with her like snooping on her boyfriend. So she's by his house, like up the road, parked, her and her friend, waiting to see when he gets home because he said he had to work but she doesn't think he's working. So she's kind of like stalking him. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, those are crazy vibes off the get go. <laughs> like if you have to spy on your boyfriend because you think something there, something shady is going on, then you're not with the right person anyway. <laughs> so we start with that. And then there's like a prank that happens. And I guess her brother is a very jokey, likes to pull pranks on her. So she's at school. She sees her boyfriend talking to this other girl. Um, not like flirty, really just like kind of laughing and talking. And then he like comes over the next day. This is after the day that she like snooped on him. And he's like, we need to talk or whatever. And she's like, they ended up getting, getting interrupted by her brother and his other friend. And so they couldn't talk and she like completely is like talking to her friend going, I just know he's gonna, he wants to be with her and, and he, I could just kill her. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well that's, that's a little extreme, but, uh, so he is talking to this other girl and he has not confirmed that he wants to like date this other girl, but he does say that he thinks they should date other people. And she like loses it. She goes a little ballistic. Well, she's gonna go confront this other girl even though he, like I said, he didn't say he wanted to be with this other girl. And something happens and the girl has an accident and everybody thinks that she hurt her. And then all of a sudden she's starting to get phone calls, like crank calls. And you know, her boyfriend, boyfriend ex-boyfriend I don't really know it's really they haven't like officially broke up yet but anyway because he's still around and he's like it has to be just a joke someone's just playing a joke um and she's getting these these calls threatening her life so that's that's all we're at <laughs> but um I mean it's fun like I said she she's a little crazy Karen so I will come back with my final thoughts on this hello I am back with my final update um I enjoyed it okay the girl was really crazy. I thought it was going to go a different way than it did. So that was like pleasantly surprising. But she was really just kind of annoying. Like, you know how sometimes you just don't like a book because the main character is just super annoying? I think they just made her overly obnoxious um, and made her seem too crazy, Karen. And I just was getting annoyed with her after a while. But um, overall, it was okay. Um, I'm going to give this one a three star. So recap on how I did. So my favorite was April Fool's. Five stars on that. Um, and then the Camp Fear and Call Waiting both got three stars. They were pretty good fun. I would probably pick them up again later. Maybe. Def I, I would probably definitely pick up Camp Fear again. I'm not sure about this one. because She really annoyed me. But 
um, I don't know. And then uh, Spring Break was a definite two star. I would not pick this. I'm, I'm going to unhaul this one. Um, I'm really, if it's three stars or above, I feel like I can keep it on my shelves. And then like, you know, even if I don't pick these up for another, you know, five years, I forget stuff. I don't know about anybody else, but like I can read a book and then an hour later turn around and be like, what did I read? <laughs> to close out this vlog, I'm going to do a little bit of point horror facts for you. So for those, I, surprisingly enough, lately um, in my Discord group that I'm in for one of my Patreon, some people have mentioned that they didn't know what point horror was. And I was like, okay, I go, well, that makes sense. I guess if you don't read, you know, mystery horrors, you may, may not know what point horror is. So point horror books are young adult fictional horror books that were published from 1986 to 2005. And I don't know why they really call them horror books because, I mean, I guess back in the day that it might seem a little like scary. So they thought they would call them horror, but like they're not every one that I've read is not very, they're not gory. They don't usually talk about dead bodies. Like they, they hint around to the fact that somebody's going to die or somebody did die or there's a ghost or like, I feel like they're more mysterious, you know, like scary as in a creepy, scary vibe, but not like horror, I guess. But anyway, there are a total of 113 books that are point horror books, and there are six authors that contributed to this. The, the main one that I love is R.L. Stein, and point horror is actually what kind of gave him his big break into being such a big name author. And his book was the very first point horror book, which was Blind Date which I should have looked this up because if I had looked up these facts before that, I probably would have read this for the vlog. But I am a point horror booked out right now. So I, and I have other things that I want to get to this month. So I am not going to read that for this vlog, but I am going to pick this up probably within the next couple months because I want to read it now. So the authors are R.L. Stein, L.J. Smith, Diane Ho, Richie Tankersley Cusick, Christopher Pike, and Caroline Cooney. That is a little bit about the little facts about point horror books. So let me know if you have heard of point horror books, if you've read any point horror books, which ones are your favorite if you have. Okay, my lighting changed a little bit because the sun's going down, so I had to turn my light on but um so yeah I am going to wrap up this vlog so I think I did pretty good it did take me longer than I wanted it to take to read these because these are really fast reads but I just had like I said I'm mood reading this month so if I wasn't in the mood to pick it up I just didn't pick it up so but I mean honestly if you want to pick one of these up you could burn through this in you know a couple hours or less so if you like this vlog make sure to give it a like it really helps my channel and until my next video, friends, be yourself, be awesome, be kind. Bye.